Well, good morning, church. Good morning. morning, saints. Oh, you weren't sure if you should say good morning. In some churches, you have to be. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, buddy. In some churches, you have to be canonized to be a saint. It seems in the New Testament that even raggedy, taggedy people like me and you are saints, holy ones, not because of who we are, but because of who we have in us, Christ. And so I'll say again, good morning, saints. Good morning. Oh, that sounded much better. It's an honor to be here. My name is Phil Miliorati, and I've been privileged to, to be here in times past, and actually decades past. I grew up at the Northside Gospel Center and had connections with Medina Baptist Church. I, I know I only look 35, but, you know, I go way, way back. Um, not enough of you laughed at that, so I, that, that wasn't good. Um, I'm just honored to be here today. I'll leave that up here. And to know about a couple things. One is your prayer conference coming up. I'm always excited when I hear about a church that doesn't just talk about prayer, but says we need to do some teaching, training, exercising, mind stretching. We, we, we need a prayer conference. Uh, I hope it's more than just information, but it, that, that you come to it with the idea of, Lord, how can you train me to go further or deeper or higher in prayer? What can I do to become more effective at it? I don't know about you, but uh, watching the video that, that Dear Saint, um, I get encouraged by someone who has such a depth of devotion in prayer. But then the second wave of response is, I'm just a dog paddler. This lady's, you know, swimming the English Channel, and I'm barely dog paddling off the shore. And so my message today really is to, two things. One is to just quickly say to those of you who are true intercessors, you may not realize it, but your faithfulness in prayer, where some of us spend three minutes, maybe you spend 30 minutes. Some of you maybe three hours. No one knows that because you're not supposed to tell anybody. It's between you and the Lord. But thank you. You have kept maybe this church, but people like that keep churches in business when the rest of us are off doing our own thing and not doing much praying. Thank you. Ser sincerely, thank you. But for the rest of us who are what I call dog paddlers, we can dog paddle in the water. You know, we kind of survive a little bit. We get prayer. We get get a little bit wet when we go into prayer, you know, if prayer is like swimming in water, we get a little bit wet, but we don't maybe get very far. I hope today's message is, is a deposit to you and to me. One of the reasons I feel so strongly about this is because this prayer that I hope to share with you and unpack a little bit with you, my hope is the result is that you take some of this and begin to work with it, not on your own, work with it in the leading of the Holy Spirit, the empowering of the Holy Spirit, connecting it to Scripture. It's already, it already comes out of Scripture, but keep connecting it to Scripture. And also in the context of praying with each other. So today, I, 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 don't, I don't have them, but uh, as I'm speaking, preaching, coaching, whatever I'm doing up here today, I, I'm distributing. I'm coming to make a deposit in the bank of Medina Baptist Church. But I'm not going to go to the office and just say, here's all these puzzle pieces. Put them in a safe and don't let anybody steal them. I'm coming to each of you, inviting you to take a puzzle piece today that comes from Scripture that I hope God will use to enlighten you but also exercise your prayer beyond where it's been. But that puzzle piece has a unique shape. No one else has that unique shape. You've done jigsaw puzzles. Every piece is important. Every piece is important. But no piece is useful until it's connected with maybe two other pieces, three, four other pieces. So, Lord, help us. Help me to distribute these. Well, it's really your Holy Spirit distributing them. Use me in just pointing people to the word and speaking a little bit. But Holy Spirit, we're asking for you to become our comforter, our counselor, the one who comes alongside and coaches us. We want to pray, not better to get us like a Sunday school star. We want to pray more effectively so that the needs within the church are met in powerful ways. So that the needs around the world in missions are done more effectively, more powerfully. But also, Lord, the needs of those around us in this community, in our office or factory, the places we, the bowling team, wherever it is that we go. Would you 
make a deposit this morning with each of us and then show us how to best understand that peace that we are and to connect it with others. We pray, Jesus, and we proceed in your name. Amen. If you'll allow me, I'd like to talk with you about how to pray when you don't know what to pray. How to open an iPad to get your notes when you don't know how to do it. There we go. Maybe it sounds like a strange title. Think of it this way. Maybe there is a, I like to call it a starter prayer, that can help us when we know we need to pray. We know we need to pray more than, you know, God save everybody who's lost. We need to dig in. We need to get deeper. We need to go further. We know that has to happen. Uh, sorry, I got my phone here to tell me the time. I'm going to ignore it, but I at least wanted to have it up here. But uh, there we go. Uh, so we need that start. We always, know what, we always know what to pray, and that's part of the problem. Because, and I'm really speaking for myself, because I think I know so well what to pray... I'm off praying, and I think sometimes the Holy Spirit's saying, hello, that's a nice road you're going. Would you like me to assist you? And so I hope today that this section of Scripture, if you want to turn there, it's Luke 18, verse 1. I hope that this section of Scripture starts us, I don't want to say starts us on the journey. We're all on that journey. We all pray. I'm not here to say you don't pray, and I'm here to tell you you need to do it. That's not why I'm here. And frankly, a lot of times, sermons on prayer, as good as they are, all they do for me is make me feel more guilty that I'm not doing it enough. So I'm hoping that this puzzle piece, this deposit into the, the bank of your spiritual life, into the overall bank, if you will, of this congregation, I hope that it results in, yeah, more people praying more, but it's not about quantity. It's about that connectivity that we need to have when we pray. Luke 18, 1. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. I know that you're in a what you might call an interim time. You're considering an interim pastor. Uh, I've done three interim uh, times with, with three different churches over the years. And I, I've discovered that, that there's kind of like three kind of people or three kind of responses uh, during a, an interim time. I, I'd prefer to call it a transition time because, well, I, th these people will help you understand what I mean by that. There are those who are so blessed by the past in this church or their, their church past, maybe other churches, similar churches. They're so blessed by that that they can't see into the future that God may be ready to sing a new song, to bring a fresh wind of his spirit, to do his ancient truths that never change, but to reveal them and release them maybe differently. I'm not criticizing the past, but we, we don't live there anymore. We have to be careful. And some people, in fact, one of the uh, interims that I did, uh, I said that my major success in being there was helping all the crabby people leave. Uh, and, and I got... <laughs> And I, that's not kind. I don't mean to talk unkindly of people. But, but those who were so connected only to their roots that they became obstacles for what God wanted to do. Then there are those who are saying, you know, we, we love our past, but wow, the future. We can't wait to get to the future. And some, and I'm thinking of one church in particular, they went headlong so quickly into their future, meaning getting their next pastor, that within three months, he was gone. They hadn't sought the Lord. Oh, they said prayers, but they hadn't sought the Lord. They hadn't asked God who's the next person for this ministry. Who's chief shepherd? Who's the, the next human shepherd for this church? They were so eager for the future, they missed, and this is the third response group, and I hope you all jump into this group if you're not already in there, that interim group, that transition group, that group that says this no matter how we got here, and maybe there were some disappointments, maybe there's been some pain, maybe there's even dis disagreements, but you know what? 
This is an opportunity from God to receive a fresh vision from him as to who we are and who he wants us to be. So my hope is that uh, if it's your, if, if the, uh, an interim is in your future, that you'll allow that person to not just preach sermons, but as God would use that person to, to coach and to, to ask hard questions. You see, those of us who are entrenched in the past don't want any new questions. Those of us who are so focused on getting into the future, uh, well, well, we want questions, but really what we want is the answers right away. We want the answers too quickly. There's nothing better than a good question. You say, well, no, the answer is better. Well, of course the answer is where you're going to, but the quest, the process, the journey is as important as who you will be when you get to that destination of the answer. Some would say, oh, let's just get to the destination. But if you haven't matured, if you haven't, where appropriate, repented, if you haven't been sought, if you haven't sought the Lord and prepared your soul so that you're ready for something new that maybe isn't your preference, you're just looking for the answer to get going again and not looking for God to make us into something that can do something in the future that the legacy of that will be greater than whatever legacy we've had from before. Somehow that's all in Luke 18.1. Always pray and not give up. This always applies, but absolutely applies in this interim time. Always pray and not give up. You're thinking of 1 Thessalonians where Paul said, pray without ceasing. Pray all the time. One, in, one way of interpreting that is to say, pray always, but don't give up. Don't stop praying until God, what is that? You've seen push, P-U-S-H, pray until something happens. Always pray and don't give up. But part of the problem is if the only kinds of prayers we pray are, dear God, here's some details that you may not be aware of about someone who's sick or someone who lost a job or our church is without a pastor. Let me inform you of these details. And then since I know you're so busy, uh, I'll kind of do a PS. I'll tell you what you ought to do, save you some time, get some things done, and we're off and running. If those are the kind of prayers, I don't know, I, I confess, the reason I know that prayer is I pray it. We need to pray prayers that, that, that help us dig deeper into who God is in, in us and with us. And when more of us take that puzzle piece and begin to pray that way and connect it with others who are starting to pray that way, even if we're still dog paddling, but we're doing it with great, more grace and we look better at it, it's still better. Always pray. Don't give up. Lord, help my friends, my brothers and sisters, the saints, the holy ones made holy by Christ, the righteousness of Christ. Help them to always pray, but not always pray the same way, to pray by the leading of your spirit and not give up. Lord, give them faith and hope today that your love says that you're not finished with this church yet and that you have plans beyond which they've dared to ask or think. And for those who are only hoping another pastor comes so things get back to normal, Lord, give them a bigger vision. And for those who, who, who uh, love the past, tell them that you can do that again. It might just look different. But the joy of the Lord will fill this place. Not just now. Not just in the months ahead. But if you tarry, Lord Jesus, in the decades ahead here at Medina Baptist Church. In Jesus' name. Now, for those of you who think because I prayed the sermon's ended, it's not, it's just beginning. Uh, verse, verse 9, Luke, Luke 18, 9. To some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. Now, I don't know about you, but as soon as I hear that kind of stuff, and I know he's going to talk about a Pharisee, I kind of start pointing my finger and say, boy, those guys were bad. They didn't get it. Uh, and, and I get very critical of them. And, and the, the Lord says, you know, yes, but the reason I, I, I'm putting them out there, Phil, is so you can see yourself in them. Verse 10, two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee, the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, and we all go, yeah, that, that's a good prayer. Oh, or even this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. 
And there's no more of that prayer. And I wonder if the Holy Spirit just said, I can't give you any more. You get the message. This guy just, I'm, I'm, I'm doing sanctified speculation here. This guy just went on and on. But even if he didn't, he said enough there to expose the desire of his heart. His desire was to be seen and heard and to inform God that he's better than everyone else, which, of course, we know is the exact opposite of the gospel. This is before the cross, but the gospel is always the gospel. He was a... He, he was a Pharisee, so we, we kind of put him over there, and we, we said, yeah, you know, watch out for those guys. Well, what if, what if it went like this? This man who came to the temple was a, uh, well, Pharisees are teachers and scribes, some of them. So he, uh, he taught Sunday school. Uh, before that, he was leading a small group. Uh, he, he, uh, he organized the Iwana clubs. I'm not speaking about anybody specific here. I'm just trying to make the point that the Pharisee is not so unlike us, or at least the temptation that I have when it comes to prayer. Uh, he says, uh, I give a tenth of my, uh, I'm a tither. Uh, this, was, this guy was man of the year two years ago in the church. The contrast comes. Verse 13. New International, the first word there is but. I love that word. I put it in red. But. That's the best news. You want to talk about the good news in three letters? It's B-U-T. I'm a sinner, but. Oh, man, we got a Pharisee praying over here, but. But you see, God is not limited by our sin. God is not limited by our own uh, selfishness, uh, by our own standards, our traditions. There's always a, a, a but. But God can do something new. But God can do something better. But God can heal that. But God's not out of resources. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He was in the corner. This guy's in the center. Tax collector's not looking for the spotlight. He would not even look up to heaven. I don't know. Fear of maybe seeing God in a sense. Has this ever happened to you? Either you've done it or someone's done it to you. They... they They've done something wrong. They have to come up to you and apologize, and they can't even look you in the eye. This man was praying before he even uttered a word. Posture is part of prayer. That's why when God gives you the sense that you need to stand, stand. When God gives you the sense you ought to kneel, if you're physically able, kneel. God says, Lay flat on the ground as a sign of total dependence. Do it. Posture. It's not magic. It doesn't impress God. God doesn't give you an extra bounty, brownie point. But God has given us a body and a soul that is meant to not just house our spirit, but to express our spirit. Stood at a distance. Wouldn't even look God in the eye. And then beat his breast. A sign of sorrow, regret, before he said a word. He said a prayer. He expressed a prayer. Prayer is not just the words you say. Prayer, it, your prayer begins as you come to the place of prayer, whether it's literally a prayer meeting, you're in your car and you're about to pray. Who you are is as important as what you say. And he said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And in the, in the original language, there's, there's a, uh, before the word theos or, or deity, God, uh, there, there's a, a letter there and it, it it's like a, an article, the God, uh, and our way of maybe best in applying that is to say, oh God, uh, he, he was expressing, let's go to that next slide, oh God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Uh, skip back that, you know what, let me just stop at this tweeting thing. Uh, for those of you who don't tweet, uh, go to that thing and find out about it. It's an opportunity for you to share your faith with people, some you'll never meet, but some who maybe find you, friends, family, like Facebook stuff, uh, yeah, this can be a big waste of time, Facebook and Twitter. It can also be a strategic use of time. Uh, consider blogging. Uh, tw Twitter, it, it, and this is kind of, the reason I'm, I put that slide up was, uh, Twitter is, uh, this is a Twitter prayer. Uh, go, go, yeah, stay there. The, the blog, I went ahead, but uh, go back. On, on, on the right side is... Uh, a long uh, blog that I've done, and that's not even the whole thing. It, it, it's, it's content. It's a, it's a lot of statement, and there's a place for that. But on the left side, there's three tweets. 
They're very brief. You only have 140 characters. An exclamation point is a character. I've spent 10 minutes, 15 minutes, trying to take a thought and bring it down into 140 characters in a way that will communicate to people. And that discipline is good for the person, not just will read it, because it's clear and they can understand it, the discipline of the, the tweeter or the prayer as we'll see in a moment, is good because it causes us to dig deep into what God wants us to know. Too many of our prayers, there's nothing wrong with them other than they're just the surface. And God's saying, dig deeper. Stay a moment longer. So we go up to, oh God. The exclamation, oh, is used to express strong emotions such as surprise. Fear, anger, pain. It's used in direct address. Oh, sir, I forgot your keys. It's used to indicate understanding or acknowledgement of a statement. Oh, I see. So this, this word that, that somehow people figured out a good way to define it, in front of God, oh, God, is such a wonderful starting word for this prayer that was prayed, but this is a prayer that can serve as a template for us in our prayers when I'm not sure what to pray, or maybe I'm too sure what to pray, it'll just be routine. It'll be the same thing over again. I really am not listening to the Lord. I'm just saying good things, not a bad prayer, nothing wrong with that. But when I really want to know the heart of God and the mind of Christ, I need the power of the Spirit. And this template is something the Holy Spirit is using in my life to take all the, the clutter, all the noise, all the scriptures that, that I could, and, and to kind of, Phil, let me just get you focused. Focus in here. And the way to start is with not just, oh, God, but, oh. Is it an O of dependence? Is it an O of, oh, I'm, I've sinned? Is it, an, is it an O of praise? Oh, look. Look what I see. I see heaven. And... I believe when we're praying by the leading of the Spirit, the Spirit gives us that O. Oh. The Spirit begins to work in our mind, but first in our spirit, so that when we go through the rest of this, this prayer, this template, if you will, not a formula, we're not trying to repeat over and over again and hope it's got magic words, no. It's just a, it, it's a primer, it's a help, it, it's a template. And if we are being led by the Spirit, and we listen to ourselves, the very first statement we make, oh, will inform us of where the Spirit's leading. Again, He might be leading us into praise. He might be leading us into confession. He might be leading us into warfare because some, there's a conflict going on and people need immediate help. Oh, God is what He said. Romans 8.26, next slide. Romans 8.26, you know this. I'll read it. The Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. When we do not know what, to, uh, what we ought to pray for, the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. Oh, I think I may have read that wrong. The Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. When we do not know... You're noticing I'm not saying it right. I had a, Maybe I've told you this before, but the Lord had to rebuke me at one point. This is years ago, but... For, for years, I would quote that prayer when I was doing prayer workshops and says, hey, when we don't know how to pray, the Holy Spirit helps us. And he said, would you read the verse from Scripture, please? Show me where the word when is in there. The Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. Why? Because we do not know what we ought to pray for. And I want to say to God, yes, I do. Or what that really is, saying, God, you're wrong. I know what to pray. They, they just asked us to pray for, for, for this person who's sick. I, I know what to pray. The Lord isn't saying that our minds are useless. What he's saying is, well, at least to me, my application is, Phil, when you think you know what to pray for, good. But then ask me what to pray for in what you're supposed to pray for. Because the prayers that Jesus is praying on behalf of the church now in heaven are much better, more effective 
much more insightful than the ones I would come up with. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with wordless groans like, oh. You ever prayed a one-word prayer? I encourage you to, it sounds like we're manufacturing things. This isn't a, a methodology. We're not looking to the methodology. We just want this to be an equipping tool for us. But, but have you ever prayed a one-word prayer? I may have told you in the past, but when our second child was about to be born, I was uh, an, an interim at Uptown Baptist Church and about to go into the Wednesday prayer meeting. Got a call from my wife who was in Myrtle Beach with our daughter, and she, that we knew, I knew there was some things not going well, and she said, well, they're just, they just put her on a, a gurney, and they're rushing her down the hall to the operating room, the, the umbilical cords around, around the baby's neck, and it doesn't look good, and that phone hung up. All I could do was drop to my knees and pray, life, life life. And sometimes I was just exclaiming it as this is what I want. This is what I pray happens. Other times I was saying it to God as if he needed me to say, we want life. We don't want death. And sometimes, I don't know where I was, but I was, wherever you were, Satan, I was talking to you. Life, not death. Life, not death. You can't steal, kill, and destroy. But all of that was said, if you will, in that one word. I only said one word over and over again. Oh, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Look at that, uh, some of the possibilities. With, oh, take the next one. Next slide. Thank you. O can be a desperation. Now, don't worry about thinking, remembering all these. I'm just trying to give you the fire hose, and we'll come back to the simplicity of this in a bit. Desperation, sadness, shock, frustration. I know you never have those things in your life, but when you do, maybe the way to start your prayer is not telling God what to do and how to fix it, but just say, oh, God. Next slide. Sometimes it's petition. We're interceding. We're declaring. We're supplicating. We're asking. Oh, God. Next slide. Sometimes it's exaltation. It's not just when the negative things happen to us. It can be praise for who God is, thanks for what he has done, joy. Please pray some joy prayers. Pray some, oh God, prayers that, that aren't re response to people's needs, your need, the, the evil in our world. Just pray some, I love your prayers to God. Oh, the joy, Father, of knowing you. Oh God, next slide. When, when we pray, oh God, he's really asking us, tell me who I am. Not in a theological sense, well, uh, I can recite the Apostles' Creed. No, no. What he's asking is, what is it of my names, my titles, my abilities, my attributes? What is it that you are coming to me, not for, but who am I that you're coming to at that moment? Here's what I mean by that. Go up to that next slide. And these are just a few. There's three columns there. We're going to have Father, then Son, then Spirit. Dear Father speaks of intimacy. Maybe you need time with God. Maybe you're lonely. Mighty God. I need a mighty God to help me out of this mess. Creator God. Stepping back and looking at the vastness of the universe so that maybe your problem becomes a little smaller. Oh, loving Lord. I've messed up, Lord. Loving Lord. Holy One. I need to see you afresh. Holy One. Next slide. Lord Jesus, of course, we could start that prayer. Lord Jesus, have mercy on me, a sinner. And really, that's the sinner's prayer, isn't it? Isn't that how we all came to Christ? Whatever words we used, we're saying, Lord Jesus, you died on the cross for my sins. That's who I'm speaking of. You're my Savior. It's not my works. It's already been said. Matt already said that. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy. Lord Jesus, holy Savior, great deliverer. It's a sign that someone needs rescue that might be a good way to start a prayer for someone that doesn't know the lord is trapped in the world the flesh and the devil my redeemer i need to go back back to the table so to speak the lord's table without taking communion rem just remembering what you did on the cross good shepherd i hope you pray some good shepherd prayers because you know what you're without a what we call a pastor a senior pastor but you never have been, never will be without the chief shepherd. 
the one who is really the pastor, the leader, the visionary, the empowerer of this church. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Not a, it's not wrong to, to talk to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit points us to Christ. But the Holy Spirit, if you're talking to the Holy Spirit, you're talking to God. The Holy Spirit is not a junior partner. The Holy Spirit is not a, 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 a spirit that, that, uh, that points us to the, to, to the God. The Holy Spirit is God. Roaring wind. Blazing fire. Counselor. Comforter. Indwelling spirit. Oh, God is a good way to start a prayer. How to pray when you don't know what to pray? Prayer is God revealing his will for us by the words he pulls out of us. So listen to yourself. And that's why a, 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 a tool like this, a prayer like this, helps us listen to it. We craft the prayer more than spew it out. Listen to yourself to hear the heart of the Father, the mind of Christ, through the revelation of the Spirit. The less I say and the more they say in my prayer, the better. You say, yeah, I get that, but then God already knows what you're going to pray. Yeah. You see, our prayers are not for God. God doesn't get up there and suddenly there's a huddle of Father, Son, Holy Spirit. You know, those people at Medina are meeting this night and they're praying. Hadn't thought about that that they're asking us. Well, God, what, do, what should we do? See, our prayers are meant to... When we pray, we're meant to hear the mind of Christ. Oh, that's what God wants. Haven't you ever prayed a prayer? Of course you have. You prayed a prayer where, where you're not praying in a different language. You're, you're not praying for something you've never heard of before, but you're praying about it in a way I've never thought of that before. It's like you're hearing your thought as you get it, but it's a prayer. That's that. It's listening to your, yourself because you're hearing the heart of the Father about this person that you're praying for. You're, he's revealing, the Holy Spirit is revealing the mind of Christ as to what your group, your family, your business, your church should do. See, the Holy Spirit isn't there to help us pray a good prayer that God goes, that was a good one. I bet they're listening to the Holy Spirit. Let's pay attention to them. It's not that. It's God wants to hear. It's almost like God wants to hear himself. Not because he's an egotist in our sense of the word, but because he is the great ego. There's no statement God can make about himself that's not true. When I say something like, hey, I did this, I'm bragging. When God says it, it's just true, and we thank him because he's sinless. He does it for pure love purposes. Prayer is God revealing his will for us by the words he pulls out of us. Oh, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Oh, Lord, give help to my daughters as they seek you. That's a prayer all by itself, but it's a prayer that starts a prayer. It's a way that God says, Phil, come to me as, as the chief shepherd this morning. Chief shepherd, give wisdom. It's, so as I'm asking him for something, he's telling me that's a need Give wisdom to our group praying today. I know that's not two words, but you can cheat. This is a great prayer. You don't have to just do two words or two syllables. As I'm saying those things, God is revealing to me a, a, a template, if you will, of how he wants me to listen more closely for prayer. Next slide. Have mercy. Oh, God, have mercy. Oh, you're already ahead of me. That's good. Stay there. Have mercy. I'm going back. What do you need? He's asked. Thank you. He's asking us to tell him what we need. And our best answer is, you know what I need. But as I give voice to it, you're revealing to me what gift you want me to give you, even though I'm asking you to give it to me. The pagans asked God, for, send rain, we're in trouble. Do you know that? Are you paying attention? Wake up! When we say, God, send rain, uh, whether it's literal rain or it's a resource or it's, it's help or whatever it is, uh, help us. As we ask him, we should stop and say, the, the fact that I'm asking him is God's sign to me that he wants to help me. He wouldn't have us ask him for anything he doesn't want to give us. So have mercy is, is God's way of saying, tell me what you need. Tell me who I am, oh God. Tell me what you need. And now you can go, show favor, give wisdom. Next slide. These are just a couple. We'll go through these quickly. Be gracious, bring healing. 
please guide, reveal truth, and we could fill that out. And that's what I'm hoping you will do in the hours of this day ahead as God reminds you of this, as he gives you a prayer and maybe you get stuck. Go back to this one. Oh, Holy Spirit, come close. Holy Spirit, give wisdom. Holy Savior, forgive me. Sometimes you don't even need to go through all four of these segments, if you will, of this prayer. Sometimes you may stop at the very beginning. Have mercy on me. Who are you praying for? Well, certainly yourself, your family. No, go ahead. Uh, some Next slide. Family, friends, co-workers, but also our church, community, our country. The workshop I'm going to do is going to focus on outward prayer towards community and beyond. Our enemy, crisis. This is unlimited. These are just a few samples. A sinner. Who do you need? Why do you need to pray? Literally, the, 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 the uh, tax collector who prayed this prayer prayed, Oh God, have mercy on me, the sinner. What he's saying there is, uh, I'm outing myself. I'm not hiding in a group. I'm the sinner. You already know that. But I need you, Lord, to have mercy, to forgive me. A sinner. Go to the next slide. Maybe I've fallen, failed, or lost. I'm lost. Next. I'm repenting. I'm scared. I'm searching. I'm struggling. I'm sorry. There's no prayer that won't work here. And then you see that last column. But it can also be used to say, I'm rejoicing. I'm praying for my daughter, my son. I, I, I'm, I, I'm your servant. I, I'm your witness. Uh, unending ideas here. So don't worry about the list I've given you. Go to that next slide. Here's a template. I'm going to ask you to repeat after me. And let this be a prayer. Lord, we, we ask that we're not vainly repeating just words. But your word is a living word. Would you enliven these words to us? And that we would not become mechanical about it. But would you help us incorporate this into our prayer life? To, to, at least for me, to get a, get a little bit further out from the, the shore... Uh, to trust that you'll, you'll take me to deeper waters and that my prayers will not sound better, but they will have more, the, the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. I want to see more powerful, more effective prayers that I pray and that our church prays. We won't brag about it. We'll give glory to you. We'll say, oh God, how great that is. But we need that. And, and the world is, is crashing in and the, the darkness is, is trying to overcome the light. We need to be prayer warriors who can come to you who can let you start the prayer and lead us. So hear our prayer. Repeat after me. Oh God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Now I'm going to say a prayer, and then you silently pray your prayer, different with your words. Lord Jesus, teach. Teach us to pray. Your church. Teach us your church to pray for your glory. Now you, quietly, silently, what name of God, what word, what attribute comes to your mind? You address him that way. What is it that you're asking for? Tell him. And who are you? Are you coming and you need to say, it's, it's me, is it for someone else? Our church? How do you end it? Oh, God, have mercy on me. We're all sinners and could always use that. But, but sometimes he's going to expand that. How, how are you approaching him today? As, as one who loves him? As a child of the God who saved you? A servant of Jesus Christ? Lord, would you take this simple prayer and make it a puzzle piece for each of us? Give us this deposit that we might come to you. Uh, anytime we just use it as a, as a vain repetition, tell us that. But give us courage to, to, to practice this prayer. Because even in the practicing, you'll hear our prayer. And Lord, I pray in Jesus' name for this church 
that the hunger for prayer will only increase and that the, the, the pursuit of prayer is not for techniques and methods and meetings and lists, but the pursuit of prayer is the pursuit of God so that we pray the heart of God, the love of God, the justice of God, the mercy of God that we pray the mind of Christ so that we know how to pursue and proceed in every situation. And we always and only pray for the leading, the guiding, the empowering of the Holy Spirit. Oh God, have mercy on us as we pray. Amen.